Hey there, virtual learners. This is your kindergarten first and second grade lesson for this past week. Um, just letting you know the things that we did in class this week and the things that we talked about. The last uh, couple weeks, like you saw in the last video, we were talking about locomotor movements. All right, different ways that we can get from one place to another smoothly, um, using our body in a different way. Right. What's that one called? Skipping, Skipping right. grapevine. Galloping. Galloping. Jogging. Jogging. Running. Running. Sprinting. Sprinting. Sliding. What's that look like? <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like like the that guy, you know, like who goes like this. Like a mine? Yeah, a mine. Alright, and so we're kind of changing gears this week and we're going to talk about um, something called spatial relations and movement concepts. And it's just big words for something kind of, kind of simple. Um, just do you know how to move your body in different ways inside your own personal space? So, uh, as you watch this, I, you can just, as I give you kind of a command, um, just pause the video and think about what you would do to do whatever it is that I'm asking you to do. And then after you try it, restart the video and we'll talk about what it actually is. So Fisher here is gonna demonstrate some of these. Um, he went through this lesson this week. And uh, so if he gets it right, that'll be awesome. And if he's having trouble, we'll help him through it. So Fisher, the first thing I want you to do is inside your own personal space, remember we get in a spot where we're not touching anybody or anything. I got him. And what if I ask you to make your body wide? Yeah. What if I asked you, okay, so what did you do to make your body wide? I spread myself out. You spread yourself out. That's right, inside your own personal space, you spread yourself out. Kind of like the circle of grace. Okay. We have, um, so I'll tell you when I want you to show me to do it, so that way people at home can pause the video and they can try it themselves. So what if I asked you to make your body narrow? Don't do it yet. Pause. And Fisher, how would you make your body narrow? Well, what did you do? I squish myself together. You squish See, look yourself at this. together. Why? Comes into narrow. Yeah. Like a spear. Okay. Just hold on for a second. What if I asked you to make your body twisted? Don't do it yet. Oh, there you go. Twisted. What do you do when you twist yourself up? You, like, you bend. You bend and you do what? And you, like, and you, you kind of tangle yourself all up. Yeah. Kind of like a grapevine. Yeah, you look like a grapevine. That's right. That's why we call it grapevine grapevine because we move our feet and they get all tangled up. Now, like remember, if you Fisher, like... Fisher, don't do it until I tell you to do it. That way people at home can pause the video and then come back and they can see what you did, okay? Because if you show them right away, then they know what it is. Okay, now, what if I asked you in your own personal space to make your body bent? Not yet. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Sorry. For me to tell you what to do. So think about what bent would be and try and make your body bent. Go ahead, Fisher. How would you make your body bent? What do you do when you bend your body? You you like you just it's it's kind of like a parallelogram. If you had like just like a a straight rectangle mm -hmm. and then you just put it off to the side of it, it would be like it would be like this. Okay, so you bend the corners on a square and turn it into a parallelogram? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's pretty cool. You're right. Okay, now here's how that would relate to some of the things that we're going to do later. If we are in a basketball game, mm -hmm. your coach might tell you to get wide so you can play good defense. If Fisher's coming at me with a basketball and I make myself wide, it's hard for him to get past me. Now, what if I was climbing a tree and I needed to get through a couple of tight branches. Yeah. Could I make myself narrow so I could squeeze through that spot to get up to my next branch? Yeah, you, you know what you know what I like to do? Mm. I like to 
I like to grab onto a short branch and then <coughs> try and reach up to the second one, then put my hand on and put my knee on a branch and then start climbing. Cool. Another thing we could do in a football game, if I'm carrying the ball and I have to get through two blockers, I make my body narrow so that I can get through those blockers and keep running with the ball. That's something we could do. How about if I'm in a wrestling match and I get down and I get twisted up with my opponent to try and pin him down? And what if I was in a hockey game and I went to take a face off and I had to bend my body to take that face off and take the puck? So those are some things that we talked about. Those are some spatial relations. And um, what if, Fisher, I want people at home to think about this too. What if I asked you to make your body twisted and bent in a medium level? Where would the medium level be first? Hold on, pause. Where do you think the medium level would be? It's kind of like if you like if you like have like a a gun and you don't want to be seen, you can kind of just go like this. This this is in the medium level. Okay, so if we were doing target practice, we don't want to use guns for references. Um, I know, I'm just telling you. You're like, doing that, but you're just right. Like you a, could. Like I, just I, I like a, a little BB gun or right. just a uh, no. Okay, but there's other things we could do in that medium level. What about put your body in the high level? How could you be putting your body in the high level? Well, you stretch way up and find the high level? Yeah, that's for sure. What if you got in the low level? So he gets really down close to the floor. Now here's how that could relate. Oh, it's to like you got to. you got like a fog like a fog that got run over. You could just be like <laughs> squished frog. Yes. Okay. So now go back to that other one. What if you wanted to make your body twisted and bent in the medium level? What would you do? Twisted and bent in the medium level. Yeah, very good. What if you wanted to be Narrow in the high level. Oh yeah. Get all squished together and reach up high. Cool. What if you made your body small and twisted in the low level? You get small and twisted in the low level. That is for sure. Now relating that to some sports activities, if I was in that basketball game, my coach might say, elevate up into the high level when I release the ball doing a jump shot. If I'm, like Fisher said, if I'm doing a target practice, maybe with archery, I would do that in the medium level. If I was throwing a baseball or, as a pitcher, I would release it in the medium level. Or you could, or you could go like this in the small level when you're doing target practice. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's that, called the prone position. Yeah, I now, practice what as about, a big one. Um, now I have one. What about if you made yourself a uh, a bowler? If you were going bowling, where would you release the ball? In the high, medium, or low level? Medium, you go like... Is that the medium level? Where did you release the ball? Though? In the high level? You released the ball way up here? No. In bowling? That would make a big long noise. Level. Mr. Banish would not be happy. In the low level. Yeah, we release the ball in the low level. We get down low and release the ball. Cool. All right, last thing I we're going to talk about here, movement. movement concepts. Now, I want you to think about this. Use your finger. You move it around like this. And show me what a straight line would look like. All right, fish. Now, show me what a straight line. You went like this. You went like this. You went this. Yeah, those are straight lines. A line that doesn't change direction. It goes from one place to another. It doesn't curve, it doesn't zigzag, it doesn't do anything, it just goes from one place to another. If I was doing a race and I wanted to run in a straight line to try and win the race, I would just go from the start to the finish. I wouldn't move around anywhere else um, to get there. That would be the quickest way to get there, right? Yeah. Okay, show me with your finger what a curvy line would look like. Uh, 
curvy line. Okay, like what you're doing there? A curvy line doesn't stop, it doesn't start. Kind it of like a swivel. It flows and flows and flows, yeah, absolutely. Um, if I was in a football game and I caught a pass and I had some defenders in front of me, I might do a curvy line so I could run this way and run this way and run all the way through. Oh yeah, that's for sure. I got it. Um, show me with your hand what a zigzag pathway would look like. Zigzag lines do what? Um, do they flow like a river or do they stop and start? They stop and start. They kind stop of and like start. kind of like going like this. But you're still going in a straight line. Yeah. You're stopping and starting. But if we're doing a zigzag, oh we change directions after we stop. That's right. Maybe I was a hockey player and I was Skating this way, and I had to stop, and then I had to skate this way with the puck, and then I stopped and skated this it's way with the puck. Like, it's yeah. kind of like your knees. Okay. That's true. All right. Excellent. Now, um, Fish, show me how you would walk in a straight line. Ready? Go. You just went from me to the camera. Good job, and walk back in a straight line. Excellent. Show me how you would jog in a curvy pathway. Okay. That's good, you kind of just went. Now show me how you would run in a zigzag. Okay, I see what you did. You went this way, stop, went this way, stop, went this way, stop. It was a little bit different than a curvy pathway, wasn't it? Yeah, I tried to go in a straight line, mm -hmm. and I do it. That's right. Okay, so those are the things that we went on, uh, went, uh, what we talked about in class anyway. And we practiced things like that. We moved around in those different pathways. We um, did some kind exercises like where, yeah, and I said things like this. Um, make your body into the letter C in the low level. How would you do that? Make the letter C in the low level. I'm trying. Yeah, you can see, you can see it on the video and see what you look like. All right, that's good. Make your body the letter X in the medium level. X. In the medium level. Okay. Cutting? You don't know an X? No. Jump to the X. Oh. Jump to the I. Yeah, jumping jacks, right? We just jump to the X. And you're in the medium level, right? If you jump to the X. Good. Show me the letter F in the high level. There you go. Yeah. So think about that. I want you to go through the alphabet and see if you can make the alphabet in different levels. So maybe mom or dad or grandma or grandpa, Uncle Joe, whoever you live with, can tell you, hey, Timmy, why don't you make the letter R in the medium level with your body? Ooh, that's a tough one, but it's good if you have that. Maybe you go like this. R. How about we make the letter um, I can't even, P in the high level. The letter P. And what if we made the number four? How do you make the number four in the medium level? Something like that. Pretty good. All right, so practice that stuff. Like my head Have fun with it. Like and do your different levels. Do your different body shapes. And do your different pathways. Move around the yard. And remember to, you know, 60 minutes every single day doing something that makes you tired, out of breath, and sweaty. 
We'll see you next week. Keep up the good work.